If you don't track, you don't know, and if you don't know, you can't grow. Hey guys, welcome to Sketch A Day. I'm so relieved um, if you've been following the drama. I recently lost my Facebook page and then reclaimed it, so yesterday was uh, kind of crazy, but we're back and as promised I wanted to create this video Because it's actually a request from one of you, which I love. I love when you comment. So be sure to comment um, Send me a message hit me up. You can always find me on Instagram Be sure to subscribe turn on alerts and sign up for my newsletter. So the request was uh, How do I sketch scuba goggles now one of the first things I like to do if I'm going into a project is to do a little bit of light research, even if it's visual research, because I don't scuba dive, I don't swim a ton, so I kind of needed to refresh my brain a little bit. So I took a look through these images, and then when I felt like I had a general understanding of what was going on, I felt like I could sketch one. So with that, grab whatever you have, we're gonna get started. I'm using marker, paper, and pencils. As always, the materials are listed below, and if you wanna support me, you can always purchase materials through the links below. So one of the ways I do like to work is just working rough. So when in doubt, rough it out. Last time we covered light till you get it right. You can use either way, um, but I'm just gonna use this big black marker here and kind of rough in what I think these might look like on a page. Um, the reason I'm doing this is so I don't have to worry too much about all perspectives. So. As you can see, I'm sketching in the front of the goggles here, maybe even mapping out where I want some of my reflective elements to be, a little bit of shadowing. Um, we're gonna have maybe a little bit of a extra strap hanging off, buckle, all that good stuff. And you know, we can even play with the shape, the shape of these a little bit. So when in doubt, rough it out, big fat black Sharpie here. And let's go ahead and I can take this page, rip it out, even fold the excess here that's on the page and now because marker paper is a little bit translucent I can put this underneath and hopefully you're able to see this but with the right light you can kind of see the sketch underneath so I'm gonna go ahead and finish this out with some pencil and the first thing I want to do is make sure I capture whatever details I'm decisive about I'm using a Prismacolor very thin pencil here. We're gonna try and keep this one nice and quick, nice and loose. Oh, broke my tip of my pencil there. So we'll keep this one nice and quick, nice and loose. I'm just gonna sharpen. All right, there we go. I tried to avoid that by pre-sharpening a few, but it's also, um, case that sometimes these things break. All right, so just moving very quickly here. Oh, look again. So I'm just gonna switch to another pencil. So now I'm using a Prismacolor Premier pencil. And with my stroke, I'm trying to be a little deliberate with that stroke and commit to kind of a, a very decisive one stroke approach because I don't want my lines to be too hairy, if you will. Okay, a little bit heavier on the bottom here. That's okay. We'll keep the lines on the front clean. And now we need a spot for the nose. Okay, so I'm going to sketch that in. And maybe this is, you know, translucent, clear part of this kind of front assembly here. And for the strap, because I have my under sketch as a guide, I can use that. And I'm doing a I'm doing a double strap. Just for the sake of simplicity and not having to sketch the technical uh, aspect of the adjustment mechanism, I'm going to hint at something here and then have my straps come off, a little bit of shading, like so. Okay, this is our little rubber portion that would rest on your face, make it nice and comfortable. 
and realizing I probably need to change the angle of this inside portion here, like so. Little, little perspective check, little perspective tweak, but there we go. Okay, now this rubber portion is just around the perimeter, so I wanna make sure that I can show that on the inside of this, we are clear through here. And there's a couple ways we can do that. We can use backgrounds, you can have um, elements show through, like the strap as it moves around the side. Okay, so that's that's one way to do it. <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna be using, I think, <laughs> if I have them here, uh, just some gray markers. I've got a cool gray half, one, eight, because apparently I'm missing the other ones. But I think that, I think this is enough at least to get started. So um, we'll use our cool gray one. And for the, the gray, I'm gonna be using the gray for kind of the inside. Okay, so just shading in this perimeter, picking a light source. And my go-to is kind of picking the top uh, right side here. So that's why there's a shadow right down there um, on the inside to make sure we get a little bit of shadowing as well. Get that perimeter shadow on my glass on the front. I've been really enjoying these Motika markers. Um, one, because they are cheap, and no, I am not sponsored. I didn't pay for the markers, but um, at the same time, I am free to say whatever I want. So, so far, they've been good. I would totally buy them, maybe not as my um, one rendering set of markers, but as a just a quick sketch color application set, I think they work great. All right, so I'm going to be using a blue for the body of these and I'm using a Copic Blue 2. This one's a little dry, so hopefully it cooperates with me today. At least a little bit. If not, we'll just switch to our four and see if we can make it work. I don't know how many of you have seen Project Runway. Tim Gunn famously would say, designers, make it work. So we're making it work. All right, so blue on the top, um, anything that is kind of facing upward, I'm gonna hit with this blue two. And now I can switch to this blue four, it's called Tahitian blue. And so anything that faces away from the light, I'm gonna introduce the secondary value, okay, even on this edge, because this edge is going away from the light. Like so, we may have some reflections in here or artifacting. So I'm gonna throw that in as well, like so. Got this surface right there, maybe a little bit in there on the inside right there, like so. And also this rubber part that touches the face, I wanted it to be blue, so. I'm gonna hit that. And we'll do a couple things to show the material change for that as well. It's a little blue on the inside where this is gonna be touching your face with that little bit of rubber trim, okay? Just like so. All right. So on the far side here, I'm gonna to switch to this blue six, which is a peacock blue. And if you missed the last video with Copic markers, at least, if you're looking for markers that work or play nicely together, um, you'll wanna try and match the first number on the marker. So zero, blue zero four, uh, zero two and zero six will play nicely together. So that's the simple way of uh, picking your Copic markers if you are using Copic markers. So just look for the same number. Here we have blue six and blue four. Okay, so I know those are gonna work well together and I can do my blends back and forth and get the tones that I need to complete my rendering here. 
or sketch render, we'll call it. So a little bit of additional contrast in a few areas, like so. And now I'm just gonna finish out the straps. And for the straps, I'm gonna jump back to my cool gray marker and really just focus on um, putting some shadow and tone where it counts because I don't want the strap to necessarily compete with the front of my sketch. So I'm gonna kind of artistically uh, take some liberties here with how much value I add in a few spots. And I do wanna go a little bit darker. So let's use this cool gray five, just where we're gonna have some serious shadowing, for example. Just in a couple spots. And we can touch up our lens shadowing here as well. Back to my cool gray one. If I had a two or three at my disposal, um, that would be nice to kind of help with some of these tones, but we're just gonna leave it like this for now. A couple little flex here with the marker on this nose piece. And then finally, since this thing's casting a shadow, I'm just gonna use this black marker, this nice big black Copic marker and throw in um, something of a shadow um, for this sketch. So there you have it, just a quick sketch of some scuba, scuba goggles, um, if you will. I think a couple things that might help this sketch, you could even throw some bubbles in on the background. Um, I don't, I don't wanna mess it up, so <laughs> I'm not gonna play around too much. Actually, this blue is kinda nice, so maybe I'll hit hit the front of the goggles with a little bit of that blue and uh, you know, maybe even just a little bit of reflected light on these straps, just to kind of complete the whole thing, um, make it really sing. Um, sometimes with pencil drawings as well, I like to come in with a marker on certain parts just to kind of help things pop a bit. So um, those are all things you can do, things you can try, sign your work. 2020 baby, sign your work always, um, date it so you know when you created it and you can track your progress. Cause if you don't track, you don't know. And if you don't know, grow. so remember that. If you don't track, you don't know. And if you don't know, how are you gonna grow? Um, thanks for joining me. <laughs> Maybe I should take up a career as an amateur rapper, no. Um, Thanks for joining me on Sketch Today. I'm having so much fun. I love doing this. I love you guys. I appreciate all the comments, the feedback, support, all of it. It means a lot to me. Um, and it, it constantly constantly blows my mind away that uh, you guys are here. So remember, you can find me on Instagram, sketchaday.com, facebook.com slash sketchaday. I have the page again. Um, I'm on Twitter. I'm pretty much everywhere. So it's, it's easy to find me. Um, so reach out whatever way works best. Uh, one final note, I have started a Patreon, patreon.com slash sketchaday. And if you'd like to support me in other ways, that's a great place to go. In fact, I'm offering just 10 spots every month um, as a level, reward level. And what I'm planning on doing is having a workshop for those 10 students, if you will. And that'll be conducted for two hours. We'll figure out the date, but it'll be a two hour interactive um, workshop where I'll be able to review your work, portfolios, give you advice. You guys get to work together as a group and um, I'll give you access to me and my time for feedback. So if that's something you're interested in, be sure to check that out, patreon.com slash sketchaday. Thanks for joining and we'll see you next time right here on Sketchaday.